Okay, good morning, everyone. First of all, a big thank you to all of you for making it today. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to come and you know, spend the day. Uh, it's been three years since we uh, had a men's conference and you know, get together like this. So it's really, really nice. Really appreciate that. I want to just say a big thank you to everybody who's, who has helped and is helping us host this conference. Let's give them all a good uh, thank you. I you know, really appreciate uh, all the volunteers, everybody uh, who are organ helping organize, host this. Really uh, thank you uh, for doing that. Okay, uh, so uh, no guest speaker today. Uh, today, <laughs> you will have to hear hear me uh, three times, uh, three sessions. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, there was just a burden in my heart to share certain things. Uh, so I, I wanted to take the time to do it, uh, and so I felt we, uh, you know, I would uh, just handle these three sessions, uh, and you know, maybe next year we'll have <laughs> people come and. Uh, speak to us, right? So that's just, I'm just coming from that uh, perspective. So what we're going to do uh, is, I'm, I'm just going to share, you know, uh, today as we share things, I will share some personal stories. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, not to elevate myself or anything, just to give you a context from where, you know, uh, I'm sharing these things uh, with us. And, uh, and then uh, the whole purpose today is to address the how to, you know, the, the practical side. How, how do I do this? Uh, most of us know the theology, or we know what the Bible is telling us and speaking to us as men. You know, it's telling us, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be as a man. Uh, but I want to just talk more about the how to and leave us with some uh, uh, things that we can take back uh, and, and, and apply this in our lives. You know, and how, you, how God will help you apply it is very personal. You know, I'm not giving you a formula for everything. But through some of the things from my personal experience and then just sharing things from the scripture, I hope you can take some how-tos back. This is how I'm going to do it you know, uh, in, 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 in life. Uh, so that's kind of the objective. I just want to leave us with that. Uh, and so that you could, you know, as you journey forward, you're able to do these things as a man, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just want to leave that uh, how-tos with us. Now, you know, um, we have a wide range of people here. We have uh, seniors, uncles who are, you know, seniors. Uh, Mr. Kundar, if you don't mind, can you tell us how old you are? Oh, wow, 29, July 29. 87 years. 87. Oh, wow, wonderful. <laughs> Mr. McQuana? 80? 80. 80. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I'm not sure if we have missed anybody else. Anybody else in that 80s range here? All right, so we have, so we have some very senior people. And then, of course, we have you know, some young men, maybe in college or just out of college, singles, single men. You know, just kind of working off and started, starting off in life, and then everybody else in between. <laughs> you know, so we've got a wide range of people. Uh, I, I'm going to try to, you know, make some of these how-tos uh, connect with different age groups, right? But uh, I'm, we may not be able to do everything, right? Touch every kind of scenario. But you try to fill in those gaps. You know, try to take this and say, okay, this is how I can do this where I am in life. Uh, you know, we're all at different stages. Uh, so I hope that you'll be able to do that. And, you know, we've come back together. So I just want to encourage all of us to have fun. Okay, this is not church service. So don't be like, oh, I have to be. <laughs> no, just relax. Be yourself. Uh, some people we are seeing after three years. So say hello, meet them. Uh, make new friends. Uh, people that we don't meet uh, usually across different locations, you know, uh, there could be some people who are not necessarily from part of APC. They may be part of other churches. They may be here. So just make friends. Enjoy the day. Have fun. Uh, relax. Uh, uh, this day will end very quickly. So enjoy. You know, uh, don't, don't uh, uh, be too sober. Just enjoy, have fun, meet people. So uh, just before I start, 
um, I want to do a little um, mention about our church app. I hope uh, everybody, I don't know, I hope everyone's <laughs> download our church app or at least know that we have a church app. If you haven't, uh, you know, you could just search for All People's Church Bangalore and you'll find our app, church app. Uh, you can download it. Uh, and the reason I'm making mention of the church app is because in our church app, there's a, there's a menu called Toolkit. And under that, you have what is called as Faith Builders. And in Faith Builder, under that uh, category, we have um, a, a topical thank, thank you, a topical list of scriptures there. So we have scriptures, you know, for the family, for the home, scriptures for children, scriptures for uh, your wife, scriptures for yourself, and uh, various areas. Right? So when I was just doing the notes for today, uh, which all of us have a copy of, um, I, uh, I was thinking, should I type out all these verses and put it in the notes? Or then I just said, okay, I'll just ref direct all of us to the church app because it's already here. Right? So uh, uh, we will be making mention of scriptures and I'll say, you know, these are scriptures you can use for, you know, this area. Uh, it's, it's not in the notes purposely because... Uh, I just refer you to the church app. Uh, you can go there, toolkit section, faith builders. You'll find uh, an alphabetical listing uh, of scriptures, and you know you could find them there. And maybe I'll just uh, mention uh, scriptures as we go along. Right. So let me just start with a little bit of background. You know, just to my own personal journey. Um, the first twelve years of my life. Uh, you know, we as a family, we were in. Um, we, we started off in Coimbatore. Uh, we uh, uh, we used to attend um, All Souls Church there. So some people are from that All Souls Church. Pastor Jay Kumar also is from that same church. So this is wonderful. Uh, but it was a CSI church, so we spent a lot of time there. Then, you know, um, we. We spent a year, uh, my sister and I spent a year in hostel in Uti, then we moved to Mumbai, then finally we moved to Bangalore. So we kind of moved around a bit in that first 12 years. But what happened as a family is things became very bad at home. Things became very bad at home. To the point where as a 12-year-old, I thought my parents were going to separate. That's how bad it had become. And going to school for me was like going to heaven. When I came back home, it was terrible because there was so much of conflict at home. And uh, I, 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 there were times when I used to just go lock myself in my room and cry because there was so much conflict happening. Things were very bad at home. But, and to the point where by the time we moved from Mumbai to Bangalore, things were so bad, I thought my parents were not going to be together. At that time, my sister was diagnosed with cancer. So again, that was another big thing. She had to go to Velo for treatment. I was left in Bangalore. So it was, it was very, very difficult those 12 years, First, uh, especially towards the, you know, 10, 11, 12, that age. Very difficult. But it was also that time that I came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, just before my 13th birthday, and I was a student here studying at Bishop Cotton's, came to faith in Jesus Christ. So that was such a powerful thing in life. And um, God in his own way began to teach me, and at that time, that is when I was 13, 14, I discovered you know, how to have faith in God. And there were so many scriptures concerning the family. And, you know, again, the, the, all these are listed in the church app, but I'll just reference some of these things to you. You know, uh, scriptures like Proverbs 3, verse 33, He blesses the house of the righteous. Proverbs 12, verse 7, The house of the righteous will stand. Yeah. Proverbs 14, 11, In the house of the righteous there is much treasure. You know, Psalm 118, 15, it says, In the house of the righteous, there is the voice of rejoicing and salvation. Uh, Isaiah 32, uh, 18. 
my people will live in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, in quiet resting places. So like these scriptures started suddenly coming up. And, and there are many more. Uh, we've categorized it in the church app. And so as a 13 and a 14 year old, I took a hold of these scriptures. One scripture that really inspired me was uh, uh, Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 and 3. It says that Joseph was in Potiphar's house and God blessed Potiphar for Joseph's sake. You know, because for me, you know, we, we, my parents, we went to the Methodist church, but that was more a routine. We came home during the week, it was turmoil. Uh, it, it was bad. It was like for me, I'd use the word war zone at home. And so, I said, God, you blessed Potiphar and his house for Joseph's sake. One person was there who trusted God. I am here. I want you to bless my home. And I remember that period of time. It must, must have been about three to four months, maybe four months. And I would take all these scriptures, the scriptures that I just mentioned, about the family, about the home. And I was the youngest in the house. My sister was you know, going through her own challenges. Parents, it was really bad. But I said, God, this house will stand. This house of the righteous, I am here. This family will stay together. You bless this house for my sake. I am in this house. I will, you know, this house will not fall. Now, it was so painful because the reality of what was happening was totally opposite from what the word of God was saying. Every day was getting worse. And it seemed like, you know, any one of these days, my home would fall apart. Parents would go different directions. And, but here I was praying. There were many evenings when things were getting bad. I would go lock myself in the room. I would walk up and down before God and say, God, your word says this house of the righteous will stand. This house will not fall apart. You bless the habitation of the just. This house is blessed. You bless part of his house for Joseph's sake. God, I am here. You have to bless this house. My family will not fall apart. And so, God is my witness. I don't know how it happened. But somewhere along that, and towards the end of that four month period, everything changed. I don't know how, but I can testify. Everything changed. Things became better. And my family stayed together until my mother passed away. They were together. So I saw God do that. And you might find it strange. But at the, around the age of 15, I said, these scriptures have worked here. I want these scriptures to work in my home and my future. So at the age of 15, I started praying. Praying, started praying for my wife, future wife. <laughs> started praying for my future children. Started praying for my future home. I, I know you might find that crazy. <laughs> it's very strange. But I'm just telling you what happened in my life. Because I saw these scriptures, the word of God, work in my home. And that encouraged me. I said, hey, this is what I want to see happen in my future. For my one day when I get married, for my wife, for my family, for my children. And so I, I would pray and I would declare, you know, a prudent wife is from the Lord. Proverbs 19, 14. Yeah. My wife, she opens her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. You know, who can find a woman like this? Her price is far above all rubies. Her own works, this is Proverbs 31, her own works praise her in the gates. She is known among the elders of the land, the people in the city. You know, just speak. This is the home we're going to have. My wife, my wife is a wise woman. She builds up her home, Proverbs 12, verse 1. So things like that. You know, begin to speak the word of God. Now, the other side also was, 
you know, as a, as a young person, I struggled. I wanted, and I, some of us, you know, we may have, we are all past, maybe past that age. But the other thing, area in which I saw the Word of God work was, I wanted to be loved by my parents. I wanted that. And again, I took the Word of God. Uh, Proverbs 13, 1, a wise son makes a glad father. So I would say, my father is glad about me. I am a wise son. Yeah, Proverbs 23, 23, 24. It says, you know, your father, your, mo your mother who, bo who bore you, she will rejoice and your father will be glad. I wanted that. I wanted my parents to be happy about me, you know, going through those same years. So I took the word of God and I believed God. I said, God, this is what I want to see happen. I want my parents to feel happy about me. And sure enough, that happened. You know? It, it wasn't like that. I was really scolded by my dad and it, for all that. But you know, I took the word of God and it saw the change. So, began to believe God for the family, for the future. Now, of course, you know, went through college and went through all of that. And, and in 1993, so going forward now, I was in the U.S. Uh, doing my master's and all of that. And in 1993 was the year when I said, okay, God, you know, this year, uh, uh, I want you to show me, you know, who I have to marry. And, um, uh, of course, I had in my mind, I had an idea of the kind of person I want to marry. And certain things I knew about what I was going to do in life. I was going to go back to India and, uh, you know, all of those kind of things. So I put that down as, you know, these are certain criteria that I cannot compromise on. Whoever I have to marry, whoever I'm going to marry should be willing to move back to India and live there and all those kinds of things. Um, so I had that things in my mind. I wrote it down. And I said, God, you have to show me who to marry. And... Uh, you know, again, this is uh, a very wonderful way in which God worked in November 22nd, 1993. The Lord spoke clearly, you know. Those days we didn't have WhatsApp, all those things. It was, you know, letter writing. But Amy was studying, uh, doing her medicine in Manipal. I had grad left Manipal, moved to the U.S. And um, uh, I was keeping in touch with, with the people in Manipal. I had started a fellowship there, so just to, you know, continue to encourage them. And Amy was one of the, the leaders there, worship leaders there. So, but at November 22nd, 1993, when I came back from my college, praying, praying, just praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, very clear. You write to Amy, ask her if she's willing to consider marrying you. I didn't say, thus says the Lord. <laughs> I said, yeah, very, very cautious. Are you willing to consider? That's it. That same day, in Manipal, sit, Amy was having tea with her friend, and her friend said, hey, consider this hypothetical situation. What if Ashish asks you to marry him? Just conversation. You know. Now, I didn't orchestrate that. I didn't tell that friend. I didn't know who that friend was. I didn't tell her to do all this, but things were set up. And I always look back to that whole experience as, as a wonderful confirmation of the, you know, the married life Amy and I began. But the reality was life was not as easy as we thought. So both of us believers, we got married. We, uh, you know, Amy came to the U.S. a year later. We were, you know, all of that. We planned our move back. And I will get into some details later on as we talk. I'm just giving a background here. But you know, I had prayed, I had believed God, I had spoken, but journeying through life was very different. We had struggles, we had challenges. But in those challenges, I went back to the same scriptures. And in those challenges, as we journey, and I'll share some of those things, uh, I learned how to live this out, be a prophet, priest, and king in the home. That this is something I can do. The promise of God is certain, but there is a process we go through to enter into the promise. And that process part is what hopefully we'll spend time on today. 
Amen? The promise of God is there. It is certain. It is wonderful for our home, our family, our marriage, our job, or this, everything. The promise of God is there. But there is a process by which we enter in. And that process, an important role for all of us to go through that process. I, I think this really sums it up. That if you and I can be prophet, priest, and king. As we go through that process, then we can enter into the promise. Right? So that's a little background. We'll get into some more you know, uh, stories there uh, on, on, on how, well, you know, the promise of God is very wonderful. You know, think about, you know, your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the sides of your house. Fruitful vine, what does that represent? You know, that your wife is going to bring you joy, uh, bring you blessing, bring you health. Right? Fruitful vine. So it's a wonderful promise. But how do you journey into that promise? Your children will be like olive plants around your table. That means be strong, well nourished. Another place in Isaiah 44, 3 and 4, he says, Your children will be like willows among water courses. Beautiful picture. Willow strong, well nourished, everything. How do we journey into that promise? Well, if you and I fulfill this threefold role in as prophet, priest, and king, we go through the process and enter into the promise. So uh, let's talk about this whole typology of prophet, priest, and king. We are Introduction. Now we're getting into introduction. I need to look at the time as well. Okay. So the schedule is there for us. What time? Uh, to 11. Okay, we have time. All right. So this prophet, priest, and king uh, is a biblical typology. In the Old Testament, we see prophets, priests, and kings were anointed by the Holy Spirit to fulfill their role and function. In the Old Testament. Then Jesus comes. He is the anointed one. The Messiah or the Christos. The anointed one. And he stands in all of these three offices. As prophet, priest and king. He fulfills that. And then he makes us enter in to these same roles. So the New Testament talks about prophesying. All believers can prophesy. All believers are kings and priests unto God. All believers. So I want to just impress on us that, you know, as believers, we are all anointed by the same Spirit. The same Holy Spirit who anointed these people in the Old Testament. The same Holy Spirit who anointed Jesus to stand in this threefold office of prophet, priest, and king. The same Holy Spirit is empowering you and me to, to fulfill this role of prophet, priest, and king. Same Holy Spirit. So we are all empowered by the same Holy Spirit. And like Jesus, we're called to be like him. In all things. So we imitate Christ as prophet, priest, and king. So I want you to, in your mind, begin to start thinking in every place. You know, as, as a young person in, in, in things that you're involved in. Prophet, priest, king. From that angle, from that perspective, how can I handle my current situation? Or if you're married, prophet, priest, and king. How do you fulfill that? If you have children, prophet, priest, and king to your children. Okay? So I want you to just picture that and we will talk about the practical things on how we lift this out. Right? So we imitate Christ. And of course, this is our life in Christ. From our life in Christ, uh, we express this role. So bottom of page three. As prophets, we listen and Speak. So let's say this together. As prophet, I listen and speak. So that's your rule. Any situation. Listen to God. Speak from Him. You have that capacity. You are 
a prophet. Meaning, don't go and say, oh, I'm Isaiah, Jeremiah. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is, God has put you in that role. He's given you everything to fulfill that, to be a person who listens and speaks. So as a prophet, you listen and speak. Any situation, you're a prophet. You, you've got that in you. You know, uh, the, the anointing is there. Your life in Christ is there for you to listen and speak. Secondly, as priests, we observe and pray, or you could say we watch and pray. You know, you watch and pray, or you observe and pray. So that's your, our second function, to observe or to watch and pray as priests. And as king, you lead and serve. So there is that responsibility of leading, leadership. You lead and serve. So if the simple, simple thing, if you and I can take it, and then we, of course, today we're going to talk about how to do it practically, but simple thing, in every situation, you're a prophet, priest, king. Listen, speak. Priest, watch and pray, or observe and pray. Observe and pray. King, lead and serve. Simple. Whatever situation you are, you come from this angle. This is who God has anointed me to do it. You're anointed to do it. You're in Christ and he gives you all the capacity to fulfill this. Now do it. This is going through the process to enter into the promise. Okay. So apply this in all spheres of life. Top of page four. Yeah. Young man, single, married, husband, father, work life, all kinds of things we go through. Every area of life, apply this. Listen, speak as a prophet. Observe and pray as a priest. And lead and serve as a king. Apply. You will journey in to the promise of God. So, let's talk about, so each session will cover some ground. Let's talk about being a prophet. So, the prophet hears from God, speaks for God into the world, and reveals God to the world. So the prophet, kind of expanding a little bit. You're hearing from God, speaking for God, and you're revealing God to the world. So the prophet reveals. So this is who God is. This is what he wants for you in the circumstance situation. So hear from God, speak for God, and reveal God in this world. That's one of the roles you and I fulfill as men. Now, of course, this applies to all believers, but today we're just talking about us as men, right? So, how do we apply this? Let's expand it. You announce what God has spoken. So you're listening to God, then you announce what God has spoken for your own life, Family, children, work life, wherever. If you're listening to God, then you can announce what God has spoken. You discover and call out hidden potential as revealed by God. You declare God's purpose for people to walk into. You confront what is wrong in love. So you see, the prophets also, God used them to confront things that were not right. So this is a tough part, but it also has to happen. And things are not going right, you confront but that's, you're fulfilling this role as a person who's hearing from God and speaking for God and revealing God. Right? So, apply this for your own personal life. Apply this for your own personal life. So, you, now this may sound a little strange, but understand it. You are a prophet over your own life. You are a prophet over your own life. That means you have to listen to God. Speak for God over your own life. So I remember when I finished, finished college, four years. I said, God, I'm going to take some time. Going to pray for the next three days. I want you to 
speak to me. What about my future? Okay, I finished four years of college. What next? What should I do next? So intentionally take time to listen to God for your own life. And I continue that. Right? You and I need those quiet times where you listen to God for your own life. You are a prophet over your own life. So you listen to God and speak the purposes of God over your own life. Speak it. I remember during those three days, those three days, that this was, you know, right after I finished, so it was 1990, 90, 1990, yeah. May of 1990. At that time, Isaiah chapter 45, was 1, 2, and 3, was really impressed with my heart. God said, I'll give you the treasures of darkness. You know, I will go before you. I will open before you the double doors. Gates will not be shut. Right? So, you know, anyone can take that verse. That's, that is scripture. It's available for all of us. But when you set yourself to hear from God, He will speak to you something very personal for you. But you're a prophet of your own life. You hear from God, and then you declare the purposes of God over your own life. Are you with me? Right? And then when you confront situations, you're not afraid. When you face situations, you're not afraid because you have heard from God. Right? So, application for your personal life. You announce what God has spoken. God has said He will do this. You speak it over your own life. You discover and you call out hidden potential as revealed by God. You declare over your own life. You know, God has put this in your heart. You call it out over your own life. This is what God has said. You're not, you know, we're not being, what to say, uh, uh, you know, doing this just to elevate ourselves. We are being responsible for our lives. As a prophet, you listen, then you declare. This is what God has spoken over, over my own life. You declare God's purposes. And of course, you confront things in your own life. Now, I want to encourage you to do the same thing for your wife, for those of us who are married. You know, Part of you being a good husband is being a prophet for your wife. Now that does not mean you go and say, thus says the Lord. <laughs> See, everything has to be done in love and humility. Okay? But as a prophet for your wife, you have to learn to listen to God for your wife. So let me illustrate that. So, you know, after Amy and I moved back to India, now Amy had made a decision, even before we, get, got, we got married, we discussed, she decided, I'm going to stay home until the children grow up. After that, I'll go back to work. So she had finished MBBS, one year internship. She came to the US, then she was doing public health. She, she, uh, she wanted to be in that area of medicine, public health, okay, so she started. Uh, but then we also had to plan to, planning to move back. So you know she didn't finish that. Uh, we cut everything short, we moved back to India. So okay, fine. And she said, I'm, I will, I'm willing to sacrifice the early part of my life, stay home, take care of the children. Once children are okay, I'll go back. So we moved back, end of 2000. Josh and Ruth, little children, started school and all, you know, started going up. Around 2007, uh, or I, again, I, I didn't sit down and write down all the years, but somewhere around that time, <laughs> 2007, 2008. Okay, Amy felt... She's ready to go back to work. But the problem was such a long gap. It's not easy to go back into medicine after so, such a long gap. Kids are now settled, they're going to school, coming back, all that. So what to do? How to go back? So this example, all right, just example. So I started praying. Okay, God, things are, this is the situation at home. <laughs> How? How to help Amy go back? I mean, it's not easy. You've been away from medicine. Which hospital? You can't just go give an application. And, and things are different these days. These days we have, corporates have, you know, back-to-work programs, you know, where they respectfully welcome women back who have taken a break. We're talking about 2007. That wasn't like a very common thing. 2007, 
But I remember this. An idea came from God. So this is why you and I should listen. It's a very simple idea. I didn't discuss, and see, I didn't even discuss this with Amy because I was afraid she'll shoot down the idea <laughs> or she may not be able. I just, the idea was simple. Go meet the director at Baptist Hospital. Tell him, can ask him, can Amy volunteer for one year in the hospital? You explain the situation. She's been away from the medical field. So obviously, you know, she can't just go and start treating patients. She's been away. But will he give permission for her to volunteer for one year in the hospital and all? You know, just, just an idea came. I didn't even tell Amy I'm going to do this. Went, made a call, made an appointment. Uh, uh, Dr. Alex was there those, those days. I said, you know, Dr. Alex, uh, this is the situation. You know, we've moved back. Amy's been out of touch. Can you give permission? for Amy to volunteer in the hospital for one year. After that, you know, you decide whether she can join or not. Oh, she's very happy. Okay, when can she start? <laughs> I haven't discussed with Amy yet. <laughs> so I went back home. I said, this is what I've done. Are you ready? She got very angry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I am out of touch. <laughs> out of touch. Uh, you know, for all these years, of course she wants to get back. That was her plan. How to get back? But hey, I believe it's a God idea. So, but she went back. And now, you know, it was very hard, difficult. Because people who were her juniors were now, uh, you know, uh, 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 maybe being consultants now. And she had to just... Uh, shadow them in different departments. But that's how, but that, that year was not easy, but slowly she became happy. And then they took her on as on a contract basis. She worked on a contract basis, I think, for three years or something. Then they took her on permanent. And then she got a scholarship to uh, do her master's with Cardiff University. So she did a master's. And then she got a uh, thing with the CMC to do her postgraduate. Today, like she's like big boss. <laughs> <laughs> she's heading the department. But how did that happen? We were in a dilemma. But one simple idea. Are you understanding? So you be a prophet for your spouse, for your wife. Right? Listen to God. There will be, you know, these dilemmas in life where, you know, God, how do we sort this out? How do we do it? What do you do? You're a prophet. You listen. You speak. And God will, when you go to God with questions, God, what do I do? He is faithful to speak to us. He's not, he's not going to, you know, he loves you and me the way he loves. Jesus. And just, you know, and then the same thing. So, uh, page four, application for your wife. You know, announce what God has spoken. Same thing, being a prophet. Discover and call out hidden potential. As you do this for your wife. See, you know, God reveals things. Okay, this is uh, what your spouse, your, what your wife is, has inside. Call it out. Encourage it. Declare God's purposes. So, you know, your spouse can walk into it. And then if there's something wrong, of course, you confront it in love. You know, you're, you, you're there. The same thing for children. For those of us who have children. You know, see, as a father, you are a prophet for your children. And that, again, when I say prophet, understand it's just a typology, it's just a role we are full. That means you have to listen to God for your You have to discover, you know, so God opened my eyes. He says the next point there is discover and call out hidden potential in your children. Call it out. So as you, you know, uh, what can you do? So, so God, show me what have you placed in my son or daughter? You know, just 
So your children, what have you placed in them? As a prophet, I need to see it and I need to call it out. And in our own home, Joshua started programming uh, when he was in eighth grade. You know, of course, he went through the early days, like uh, he was interested in this and that. And all. Then I just said, okay, uh, he enjoys technology. So that's his space. So I encouraged him, okay, just start. Uh, at, at, in eighth grade, he started, you know, uh, those days, uh, they still have those products, the uh, uh, Adreno, you can program from your con computer and you can do your embedded software control devices and all that. So he started doing that at eighth grade. I didn't have to, I just had to expose him, show him. He picked up things like this. Yeah. So that became his direction. Then in Ruth, I could see something different, you know, so I need to encourage her in that. But that you are being a prophet over your children. You see, God, what do I need? And in Practical situations. Right? For example, one dilemma, you know, some some years ago, yeah, I had to decide. I, I do, you know, kids were away in the U.S. Uh, to decide, like, okay, should I make a trip or not? And uh, it, it, it was a difficult time because, you know, it's it's first of all, it's it's we had to spend all this money to make a trip there, and if I go, it's only going to be a few weeks. There's so much going on here, take time off, all those things. So I was praying, God, should I go? Should I not go? So it's a simple, it, it, for some people, it was no, no big deal. But for me, I had to make a decision. Should I go to just for my children or should I not go? And I remember God answered. How did he answer? Psalm 127. Children are an inheritance given to you by God. Treat them like an inheritance. It was revelation. Because I never thought like that. What would you do with an inheritance? Would you just throw it away? No. If, you know, when you receive an inheritance, you are responsible for taking care of it. Example, if you receive an inheritance of, you know, uh, I don't know what, some amount, big amount, think about it, or of a house, or whatever. Uh, you will take care of that inheritance. And so God just spoke. I was praying. I said, God, I don't know, should I go, should I not go? I, you know, all these issues are there. <laughs> should I make this trip or not? And he answered, children are an inheritance. Treat them as you would treat a inheritance. Okay. Matter settled. I have to take care. I have to, you know, you, you take care of inheritance. You don't just abandon your inheritance. Right? The point is this. You and I must be prophet over our children. That means listen to God. Speak what God says. Discover what is in them. And guide them in that direction. Right? If there are things that are wrong, confront. Lovingly confront. There will be things wrong in children growing up. But what do you do? You're a prophet. You have to confront, but you do it in love. Hey, that's not right. This is the right path. Are you with me? Right. So, being a prophet, listening to God, speaking for God, and revealing God to uh, your, ch your wife, your children, your uh, just a few more minutes. Um, same thing you do for your home, uh, workplace, business, ministry, every area. You know, you say, God, what must I do? What must I do? Right? I am a prophet. I need to hear from you for my home, for my family. You know, so you hear from God, you share it with your family, you call out what's the purposes of God for your family. Uh, and, and, and you lead your family by hearing from God. But that means, as a prophet, you need to stand in the presence of God. I just want us to look at one scripture here. Let's please go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 18. 
Jeremiah 23, verse 18. It says here, For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his word? Who has marked his word and heard it? Right. So, to hear from God as a prophet, this must be your practice. Verse 18. That means you must stand in the counsel of the Lord. You go before God. Lord, I need to hear your counsel. In this matter, maybe for my, my own life, maybe for my wife, for my children, or some situation I'm facing. Uh, it could be something in the workplace, whatever. Any area of your life, you need to stand in the counsel of the Lord. God, I've come here to hear your counsel. I need to know. And then, as you stand in the counsel of the Lord, what do you do? You perceive and hear his word. Learn how to perceive. Learn how to hear. See, it's not very complicated. Sometimes it comes, like I said, a simple idea he gives you. You're praying about a problem. God will give you the solution as an idea. Do like this. Or sometimes he will use scripture. Like I said in another situation, he, he reminded me, Psalm 127, children are an inheritance. So that, that word he speaks will come as a verse or a scripture. He reminds you. But you are perceiving, you're picking it up. You stand in his counsel and you perceive and hear his word and then you mark it down and you say, I've heard from God. Okay, this is our role as a prophet. Right? For your wife, children, situations, family situations, home, uh, workplace, even in the workplace, hear from God. What can you do? We are going to face problems. We are going to face, we have to go through the process. The promise is wonderful. And you go through the process, in the process, remember, first thing, you are a prophet. You listen, speak, and then you reveal God. You do it. Act it. Follow through with action. Amen? So, first one. Being a prophet in your life. Stand in the counsel of the Lord. Perceive his word. Hear his word. Then you mark it down. Write it down. Follow through on it. Okay? Let's stand to our feet. We're going to pray. After that, we'll go for our break, please. But as we pray, I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, help me be a prophet. I'm not saying, you know, we, this is not to make ourselves feel big. Basically, it's a responsibility. As a prophet, you're going to listen. Stand in the council, Lord, listen for yourself. If you're married, for your wife, for your children, for other responsibilities, other areas. God, I want to be somebody. And all of us, all of us can hear from God. All of us. Because God has already given you His Holy Spirit. He's already put you in Christ. It is, it is already there. It's just that you and I must stand in his counsel. Lord, I need to hear. Okay? So let's take a few moments to pray, please. And I want you to pray to say, God, help me fulfill this role as a prophet. Everybody pray. Music, if uh, somebody can help us uh, on the, uh, in the instruments, please. And, uh, just take a few. Let's give people some time to pray. And maybe you may even want to pray about some specific situations. You know, uh, uh, something. Maybe for your own life. God, am I in the right place? Am I doing the right thing? Maybe you need to make decisions about your life. Maybe some transitions you need to make. You may be planning to relocate. You need to know the timing. What is the right time to make the move? Maybe you need to pray for your wife or your children. 
Maybe some things in the workplace, but be a prophet. Somebody who stands in the counsel of the Lord listens to God. Pray. Let's all pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we stand here. We thank you so much for this privilege, God, that every child of yours, every believer has been called to hear from you, listen to you, stand in the counsel of the Lord, to perceive, to mark his word. Father, I pray that for each of us standing here, God, we will hear from you concerning the matters of our lives. Give us ideas, give us direction, give us counsel. Speak to us ahead of time. Maybe things we have to prepare for three years from now. Speak to us. Get us ready, God. Help us to be prophets for our own lives. And for those you've made us responsible, help us. May we be people who hear from heaven, God, who hear from you, God. Father, we thank you so much for the presence of the Holy Spirit who speaks to us, who guides us, who teaches us, who leads us. May each one of us experience the guidance that comes from you, the leading that comes from you, God, so that we can be prophets who listen and who speak and who reveal you in our world. In Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. Amen.